Welcome to Madison Avenue Christian Church. Whether you are joining us here in person or online, we are so glad that you are here. We welcome back Megan Graves to worship this morning. Megan is a student at the College Conservatory of Music at the University of Cincinnati, and we thank her for sharing her musical talents with us again this, this morning. Linda Mauser will be presiding as elder during communion today, and I hope you have your elements ready for that part of our service. During this time of pandemic, we have had difficulty sharing and communicating in person at church, so we have decided to try an online conversation. Tonight, we will attempt our first discussion group. The purpose is mainly to see how this works and to share concerns and successes of our lives over the past five months. Look for more information in the coming weeks about other online discussion groups. Let us enter into worship. beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega, saith the Lord. Let us pray. In you, O God, all creation resides you are the author of everything the beginning is yours the end is yours you are the one who sustains life holy you are almighty God your power and might is beyond our understanding. Your gentleness and compassion is what we live by. So we come before you as mortal 
beings, finite beings, to praise and adore your holy name. We know that you take delight in us when we are obedient listeners. At this time, we incline our ear to us and we pray that you will incline yourself to us. Be by our side during times of trials and tribulations. With you by our side we can prevail. We offer our lives, this world, in your tender care. Hold us in the palm of your hands. Watch over us like the apple of your eye. You know our asking even before we do. But we would ask. Sometimes in praise and adoration and thanksgiving. Sometimes in pain and protest and anxiety. All our mixed prayers we offer before the throne. You know, O oh God, that this is indeed a challenging time. Too many difficulties around us. Most of the time we don't even understand how we could ever overcome any of those. But if you would grant us your wisdom, we can. If you would raise new leaders, we can. If you can bind us together to be one human family, we can. Deliver us from all evil. Guide us in the paths of righteousness for your name's sake. Show us ways through which we can love one another the way you have taught us to love. Those who have perished in this pandemic, we pray. Too many in numbers, just in our nation, over 180,000. Be with the families that grieve. Those who are in hospitals, people who are recovering at home, be with them and be with those who minister to them. We pray for the church. May the church be the church victorious. Not to be beaten down by everything that it faces, but to be triumphant because we believe in the living God. For every person who is bowed down before you this morning, we offer our personal prayers. We know you're listening to us. Touch us. Bless us. We pray for the poor. We especially give you thanks for those who care, especially during this difficult time. For the many volunteers and caring people at Madison Avenue Christian Church who make our ministries possible, we give you thanks. Bless our leaders. Continue to be with us throughout this worship service. Hear us even now as we join in the prayer that you taught us saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. With honor is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
This morning's scripture comes from Exodus chapter 3, verses 1 through 15. Moses was keeping the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian. He led his flock beyond the wilderness and came to Oreb, the mount of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of a bush. He looked, and the bush was blazing, yet it was not consumed. Then Moses said, I must turn aside and look at this great sight and see why the bush is not burned up. When the Lord saw that he had turned aside to see, God called to him out of the bush, Moses, Moses, and he said, Here I am. Then he said, Come no closer. Remove the sandals from your feet, for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. He said further, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord said, I have observed the misery of my people who are in Egypt. I have heard their cry on account of their taskmasters. Indeed, I know their sufferings, and I have come down to deliver them from the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land to a good and broad land, a land flowing with milk and honey, to the country of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. The cry of the Israelites has now come to me. I have also seen how the Egyptians oppressed them. So come, I will send you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? He said, I will be with you, and this shall be the sign for you, that it is I who sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall worship God on this mountain. But Moses said to God, If I come to the Israelites and say to them, The God of your ancestors has sent me to you, and they ask me, what is his name? What shall I say to them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. He said further, Thus you shall say to the Israelites, I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, Thus you shall say to the Israelites, the Lord, the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever, and this is my title for all generations. <clears throat>
Welcome back, Megan. Glad you're here. What I intend to do is to identify several meditative zones in the story. You want to ask the question, why would Moses do what he did? Moses escaped Pharaoh, left Egypt, and now he is going back to the place he escaped from where he knows he would get killed. But he still does. And somewhere in there lies a secret about the journey that soul folks have taken across the generation, kept the faith, and have passed it on to us. And my prayer is that we would be faithful every day. Moses, who had escaped from Pharaoh, and now he's a fugitive on the run, finally finds some shelter. Now he's taking care of his daddy-in-law's flock. And Jethro gave him everything. His daughter to marry, flock to take care of, livelihood, and there is Moses and there is that little phrase there you want to catch he went beyond the wilderness if you're wondering if all of this would ever end for people of faith there is your anchor. He went beyond wilderness because wilderness is not eternal. It ends. There is an end to every wilderness. That is the gift of faith. Forty days, 
40 years, what all of that says is there's going to be an end. And you and I as people of faith, we cling on to that hope that there is an end. That this is not forever. Moses goes beyond the wilderness and now he is at the mountain and there is this bush that is a glow. He did not try to explain it. He knew that the divine is trying to break through. And of course, it does. God calls him by name. God calls you by name. Tells you there is life beyond wilderness. And then more. God calls Moses. And Moses is commanded by God not to turn in the direction of God and see God face to face. I want you to hold on to that for a minute. What is happening in our postmodern life is we are people who claim to know God. And in claiming to know God, where we end up is a God of our own making and a God of our own choosing and that is not the God of the Bible. The God of your comfort and my comfort, the God of our preferential choices is not the God of the Bible. And you want to be careful. You want to be careful about making claims about knowing God and what God intends. Because when you do that, what happens is the prayers you pray out of your joy or despair is returned to sender, address unknown. That is really what happens. And if there is one thing you do not want to get wrong, is your prayer ending up in the dead mailbox. That is why God says, Moses, don't look at me. Because if you look at me, you become a person who would claim to know God. And when you claim to know God, and you make a pronouncement about this God, you know what happens is you have already created an idol, and that idol will not redeem you. By that I don't mean to say that we cannot know God. We can grow to know God. Go ask the monastic movement. The monastic movement will tell you how to ponder, how to be still, and not to be in a haste to try and put God in a frame, but to be open and allow God to reveal God's self to us. That is living and knowing God. Go ask the Quakers. And you know we have a history with the Quakers. We could easily be a Quaker congregation. Go ask the Quakers. What the Quakers would do is they would sit still in silence and wait upon God to stir their heart and their spirit. And then they begin to share with one another. We don't have that. We are so certain about this God. There is no stillness. There isn't a moment where we allow God to tell us by revelation. We are 
a people who believe in absolutes of our own making and that is not the God who is the beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega. Go ask the people who have dedicated their lives and have given up everything so that their life would become the kind of life that Jesus lifted up as a model for us when Jesus walked the streets of Galilee. Go ask those people who have made great sacrifices to serve the poor, to remind us that caring for one another is what God intends for us. That gentleness and mercy and kindness and righteousness is God's hope and dream for creation. Go ask them. That is living, growing, knowing God. Claiming dangerous stuff. If there's one thing I do not want to have an empty box of which would be my God consciousness of my own making. And that goes. God tells Moses, Moses, take off your shoes and you would wonder what's God talking about? That's a cultural phenomenon. Take off your shoes, you are on holy ground. If you go to India, no, I'm not talking about the high cathedral city churches. Other than that, if you go to other churches in India and go a little late and see the North X, it'll look like a shoe store. People walk and take off the shoes, leave it there, they come into the sanctuary. My father, even when he preached in Japan, even in the midwinter cold, he would not wear his shoes when he gets up on the pulpit. I tried that for a while in Defo. We didn't have good enough heat. And then the elders told me, we don't want you to have blue toes, so put them on. <laughs> Holy ground. You are standing on holy ground. Folks, postmodern people, the ones who need to know everything. I need to ask myself that question. Do I have the awareness of God's holiness? Or is it something I want to devise and make God a partner of everything and anything that I want and desire. God is holy. Let all mortal flesh be silent. The Holy One speaks, thunders, whispers gently and can reveal God's self in the stillness of the moment. God is holy. I said that last Sunday, I'll say it again. We do not have a fake vocabulary. Our vocabulary is very much funded by our daily experience and our finite, finiteness and our limitation. And in that vocabulary, there isn't a holy God. A God who rises above everything and a God who can look down on us and lift us up. Holy is God. And that God, that divine God is no more holy if we try to make that God into our own tribal configuration into our own parochial configuration. God is holy. And God tells Moses, take off your shoes, because I want you to be aware that this conversation is not the kind of conversation you've had with Pharaoh, or your daddy-in-law Jethro, or anybody else. 
And God tells Moses, Moses, I wanted to go back. I wanted to tell Pharaoh to let my people go. And I want you to tell the people who are so settled, even though they cry out in the night during the daytime, they are happy with the bread that they get. I want you to tell the people to pack up and leave. And Moses goes, uh, what? Okay, if I'm going to go do that, God, and if they ask me, who sent you? What am I supposed to tell them? They need to know for sure. And God gives this ID, which is only God can give. Go tell them, I am who I am. I am who I am. Folks, if we are to dedicate our lives to something larger than ourselves, if we are to tap into the power that is more than the sum total of who we are, if we are to be a people who cannot, who cannot see the end to any destruction, chaos, pandemic in our life, if we are those people, we need this God, not of our definition, but God who is God. Not marked by our own limited tradition, but God who is God. Not God of our immediate understanding, but God of divine revelation. God said, don't claim me. Be aware of holiness of God. Don't define me. I will act in ways that I choose. Is that good enough for you? It may be not. You want absolute claims that you can comprehend and hold on to. So here is the absolute claim. God says, I am who I am. And since I am, I am who I am, I will end every wilderness. I would lift every burden. I will heal the world. Dancing and singing and rejoicing may begin, not because you can, but I am who I am can. To God be honor, power, glory, and majesty, now and forevermore. Amen.
all are invited to participate in communion. The table is the Lord's and its grace is offered to all. Please join me in prayer. God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Moses, as you heard the cry of your people in Egypt, you hear the cries of your people whenever and wherever there is oppression. The bush continues to burn. You are there. Still, I am who I am. It is for us to turn to the flame and say, here I am. In breaking bread and pouring wine, Jesus gives us covenant renewed and anew. Let us remember as we come to the table that we are standing on holy ground. May our remembrance give us strength to hear and to heed your call. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And now, these are the words of institution as recorded in Matthew. While they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to the disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will never again drink of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. Let us partake together. Thank you again, Megan. And we don't say enough of thank you to our very own Jihan.
May the Holy God be your peace, your shield, and your comfort. And trust your life in the care of the Holy One. And you would be well. Amen.